what are we doing with all of these wonderful ingredients? This is my favorite holiday dish. Um, we're making mushroom bourguignon. We're gonna start with the mushrooms, and I'm gonna get you to grab that salt, and you're gonna add about a tablespoon of salt. Oh, like a big pinch. Yes, because what it's gonna do is the heat yeah. is going to cause the salt to draw out the liquid of the mushrooms. And you have 30 kinds of mushrooms in here. <laughs> yeah, so this is like, at holidays, you splurge. You want it to be a little fancier. Um, so we have kermini mushrooms, we have shiitake mushrooms, we have enoki mushrooms, we have blue oyster mushrooms, and then we have king oyster mushrooms. This will work with any mushrooms that you can find. Sizzling is what we want. I'm gonna mix it around just so that the salt kind of gets mixed into the mushrooms. And let it cook down nicely. Yeah, that's what you want. That kind of like screaming sound. <laughs> if, if mushrooms aren't screaming, you're not cooking them right. You're not cooking them right. And mushrooms don't take long at all either. No, no they don't. So now we're just gonna grab the dish that we are going to make this in. High impact kitchen. Ooh, perfect, okay, so we have four tablespoons of olive oil going in, please. I never ever cook with oil, except when I'm cooking with you. I know, it's the holidays. It's meant to be a little indulgent. We're eating. Our feelings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to add, this is three leeks chopped finely. And then just like the mushrooms, it looks like there's so much going in. These are gonna shrink down very, very quickly. All right, so this is cooked down. So now we're gonna add in just some celery. Uh, this is about six stalks, that what we did? Yeah. And then we're gonna add, uh, this is three carrots, cut finely. So we're gonna get, stir that, and we're gonna let this cook down for about 10, 15 minutes, medium high heat. Great. And then we're gonna add this to the pot with all the mushrooms. So then now we're gonna be done the veggie base of it. I'm okay with that steam hit me in the face. Oh, it's like a sauna of deliciousness. Uh, when you're making a roux, this is gonna keep cooking and so this is actually gonna get caramelized. So you're almost gonna have, not burnt bits, but like overly cooked. Three tablespoons of butter. Oh, it's got melty. I should have used a tool for that, but I didn't. So now I have it all over my fingies. This is six cloves of garlic. I love garlic. Uh, so this we're gonna cook for about two to three minutes, just to get nice and fragrant. Get all the flavors and toasted. going. So now we're gonna keep adding in more flavor. So we're gonna add in the herbs again: parsley, thyme, rosemary, about a tablespoon of each. Oh, it's like snapping and crackling. We're just gonna toast those up very quickly, and then we are going to add one teaspoon of red chili flakes, one teaspoon of black pepper. Now we're gonna add three tablespoons of miso paste. This is gonna add just amazing flavor. Miso goes so well with mushrooms. We're gonna toast that up very quickly. So now we're gonna add the flour. So this is how you create a roux. Um, a roux is just a thickening agent or thickening sauce. Perfect. So what you wanna do with a roux when you're making it is you just wanna make sure that it's incorporated as much as you can. Even if it gets stuck to the bottom, that's okay. Cause you do need to cook the flour. We're gonna deglaze the pan anyway. Exactly. Uh, here we have a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. Um, if you're comfortable cooking with alcohol, red wine makes a beautiful uh, deglazing agent. agent. Now we're gonna add a cup and a half of veg stock. You could also use any like plant-based milk if you wanted, if okay. you wanted to make this more of a creamy, creamy style stew. You just wanna cook this until it gets to like a roiling simmer. And uh, thickens, right? And thickens, exactly. Because this is going to be the binder that holds all of our veggies that we cooked together. So now we're just going to turn it off. And then we're going to pour it over our veggie mix. Perfect. And so this is your one pot wonder. There's so many flavors going on inside of here. Comfort food to me is as many flavors as possible in one pot. You weren't here before, but it took us five hours to cut all these vegetables. <laughs> So now we're just gonna mix it together. And now we get to add the nutritional yeast. Oh, it goes in here. This is going to give, again, a bit more umami, a little of that cheesy flavor. Um, and it's just delicious. And I also do find that nutritional yeast is a bit of a thickener as well. We're gonna I still have to let it cool because of all the steam. But uh, because it's the holidays, we're gonna cover it with phyllo pastry. So the trick to this is make sure that if you are plant-based, Yes. They do make plant-based phyllo. It's more rare, so just check the ingredients and make sure there's not butter in it. We're just going to take it and we're gonna drape it over. So we're just gonna go over top the edge because we can always push it in. And 
then we'll bring it back this way. And the filo, if the filo sticks together, like this one is, it's okay, because you need multiple layers anyway. And then all you want to do between the layers, let it kind of naturally fold in. Perfect, and then press it down so that it's hitting the top. Yeah, and then between layers, what are we going to do? We are going to add some aquafaba, uh, which is chickpea water. This is going to allow, again, for the um, caramelization is not the right term. Or crisp. Crisp. There we go. Yeah. It's Almost like you're done. wrapping a present. Yeah, really. <laughs> a present of deliciousness. This is probably all we need. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't go much more than that. We're kind of making this up as we go along because we're using a different dish than maybe we would have. But this is kind of what you do when you're a home cook. You learn every single time you cook, even for people like you and I who get to cook almost every single day. You still, you know, with a different product or a different dish, you always get to learn. And then I'm just going to add a little more. Yeah. Because the aquafaba will also kind of act as almost like glue, right? And it yeah. can fix things. So what are the slits going to do for us? So the slits are going to allow the steam because we still do have some liquid in the base. Uh, so the steam has places to escape because if we didn't add the slits, um, the puff pastry would balloon up essentially and it would not cook evenly. So how long are we going to bake this for? Uh, we are going to bake it first at 400 for 10 minutes um, and then we're going to drop the temperature down to 350 and we're going to bake that for 25 minutes. Um, another rule of thumb, uh, take a look at it if your puff pastry seems like it's getting a little too brown. Just take it out, put some tin foil over the top of it. It's gonna protect it, um, and then it can be finished. I really wanna try whatever this is. Mushroom burger in your own pie. Oh, wow. It feels so decadent, but it's not. That mushroom is just so earthy, and the flakiness on top. It just creates a nice little like basket to house it all in. And like you said, it's not soupy, it's just a sauce. It has a bit of a kick to it, which is pretty good. Yeah, a nice little kick, right? Yeah. Happy holidays to everyone from PB with Jay.